It's all about Good making morning. India. Can you make hardware in India? That's, that, that's the central part of the question. Absolutely. So I think there's no doubt that India was known more for its uh, software power than hardware. Uh, but I think now the realization is setting in that we are sitting on the cusp of a major opportunity as a country. And the opportunity to make India as the number one destination for export of electronic hardware products. And I think there are a couple of uh, reasons for that. Uh, one, uh, we have a large labor force, uh, a trained labor force, uh, and we also uh, are very strong in R&D. Uh, so this could lead to a design-led uh, manufacturing uh, over a period of time. Uh, and there are also a slew of policy initiatives uh, that the government announced recently. Uh, and the most uh, remarkable and notable one being the PLI, the Production Linked Incentive Scheme, uh, which basically, uh, uh, you know, basically gives uh, money to the companies on the incremental sales. Uh, and there have been various policy initiatives. And also, I think the fact that all global companies are now uh, looking at an alternative to our uh, major competitor, you know, which is China, which is the you know hub, which has been the hub for electronic manufacturing. Uh, so I think there is no doubt that we are sitting on a huge opportunity to make India as the next hub for electronic manufacturing. Well, that's it. I mean, the, your main adversary when it comes to all this are, are these Chinese companies. And the Chinese companies have been at this game for a long time and they've managed to reduce costs to uh, the bare bones. How confident are you that you can do that in India and Dixon Technologies can do that? Yeah, absolutely. I think if you look at, you know, our labor costs, it's one of the lowest in the world. And also our labor is one of the most uh, productive in the world. Uh, I think what we are lacking is a strong uh, component ecosystem. Uh, because in spite of manufacturing almost 75% of the total requirement of $130 billion worth of electronics goods, uh, we still import a lot of components. Uh, but I think that is going to change very fast. Uh, a lot of investments have been announced, especially under, again, the production-linked incentive scheme. And we feel that the time has come that a lot of the global component manufacturers will also come to India. Because let's appreciate that there is a large market uh, for the finished product. Uh, I'm sure we're already aware of the numbers. Uh, that India is going to be the largest market for smartphones in the next few years. It's, it's probably the fastest growing market in the world right now. Uh, it's expected that we'll be exporting uh, mobile phones worth about $100 billion in the next five years. So there is no doubt that India is going to be a large uh, market. And I think wherever there's a market, the component manufacturers follow. And once we do have the component manufacturing ecosystem, I think uh, there is no stopping India and the Indian manufacturers. Uh, Sunil, you sound really optimistic, but you've also talked about disability factors. What are these and what's needed to address them? Sure. Yeah, I think uh, there is no doubt that in spite of everything going for us uh, as a country, there are certain disability factors that we face uh, as manufacturers. And these uh, disability factors are there in the uh, you know, form of uh, high logistics cost because of uh, you know, not such a great infrastructure in place. Uh, there is also the high interest cost, uh, even though there is an interest subvention scheme, uh, but that's available directly to the exporter. So the entire value chain does not get the benefit uh, of the interest subvention. Uh, so these are basically the uh, disabilities, but I think with the uh, production linked incentive scheme that has been announced, a lot of the uh, disabilities uh, have been compensated for. But I think it's extremely important uh, that over the next five years, uh, that's where the scheme is valid for. Uh, we as Indian companies build up the competencies and the government focuses on removing these disabilities. Uh, you already heard in the recently announced budget that there is a huge focus on the infrastructure and also improving the, uh, the logistics costs. So I think that's already on top of the mind uh, and the agenda, top of the agenda uh, of the government and the, and the bureaucrats. And that's extremely positive. Uh, do you think that electronic manufacturers will call for government policy to help uh, the scrappage policy for automakers, for example? Yeah, I think the, you know, in the last few years, if you see the government has uh, taken huge steps and certain very bold uh, policy initiatives uh, to ensure that India does emerge as a hub. Uh, and I talked about the uh, production linked incentive scheme, which to me, as I mentioned, is a game changer uh, because of many things. One. Uh, it builds uh, global champions. Uh, it creates scale uh, for the Indian companies, which is extremely important for them to become global leaders. And it also encourages companies to invest in backward integration. 
also uh, you must have seen that the government uh, uh, you know sometime back uh, cut the tax rate uh, for the manufacturing companies and we believe that now with the rate of 17% for new companies and 22% for established companies this probably is one of the most attractive rates the taxation rates anywhere uh, in the developed world there's so much talk about greening trade what will it do about its electronics waste and how will ESG factor into all of that? Well, I think uh, in the last few years, uh, there has been a huge focus on the electronic waste uh, and there's a lot of onus has been put on brand owners uh, to ensure that the e-waste is handled properly and it is recycled. Uh, and I think this awareness probably wasn't there uh, many, many years back, but it is definitely setting in and the laws which have come into place have also played a major role that we are extremely conscious of the e-waste uh, that we generate. Uh, Sunil, you know, you've got this make in India policy and I think that uh, what we have is uh, the Modi administration wanting uh, India to have, what, $110 billion of mobile exports uh, by 2025. Seven billion is the number at the moment. That's a big, big uh, ramp up, isn't it? How, how is, do you think it's possible? Is it realistic, that time frame? Well, I think absolutely is realistic. As I mentioned that, you know, every uh, uh, major customer in the world is, is looking at alternatives. And India is the most attractive alternative now. Uh, we do, of course, have uh, as Vietnam uh, as a country where also the companies are looking at. But I think, as I mentioned, let's look at the huge advantages India has. Uh, look at the policy initiatives that have come into place. Uh, look at the large pool of manpower uh, that we have, a trained large pool of trained manpower that we have. Uh, if you do compare with countries like Vietnam, Vietnam do, does have an issue as far as the, the manpower is concerned. So I think India is sitting, sitting on a sweet spot uh, we do have a very, very large market for these products. Uh, uh, you know, you must, be, you must be aware of the figures that India already, the smartphone market is almost about 300 million pieces per annum, uh, which we believe is the third largest in the world, and it is growing again. Uh, so that is extremely essential to, you know, for companies to look at India because, one, there is a large domestic market, and also we have the, you know, the, the, the talent available with us and the advantages that I talked about for, uh, you know, making India as a global hub for manufacturing.